All right, this is part three of the Pro Tools tip, Tips series from Lilac Writer. And if you're using Pro Tools for songwriting, uh, one of the common things you'll want to do is record your song um, or your demo against um, a standard beat. And when I first started with Pro Tools, I found that this was a little bit... Um, it wasn't obvious how to do it. It's not difficult once you see how it's done, but compared to other programs, like if you started working in GarageBand, for instance, or um, Acid on the PC, things snap to the tempo more uh, directly. By default, that doesn't happen in Pro Tools, and so there's a you have to think slightly differently about it. And I'm going to show you some of the steps in uh, getting things into Pro Tools. One of the first things you need to understand is that the browser to access loops is accessed from this window called the Workspace. I'm not sure why it's named that, but Workspace is essentially an explorer or finder type of view of your, of your computer. And if you pull things in from here, then you'll be able to drop them directly into your Pro Tools project. So to get started, I'm going to first of all create a click track, because even that might not be obvious, but there's a nice uh, convenient command called create click track. And uh, let's review that again under track, create click track. And now I have a click at the project tempo. And since it's a normal track, you can mute that track um, when you don't want to hear it. But anyway, if you get a if you have a song idea and you want to quickly get started, you can set your tempo here. A lot of times we don't need to see minutes or seconds, but we almost always want to see bars and beats. And if you want to put the tempo in, put the cursor to home, which you can do with the return key. And then uh, if you click this plus, it pulls up the tempo change and you can put in the tempo. So if we wanted to do uh, more of a, of a ballad style song and put in a slower tempo, to play the guitar along with or something. The next thing I'm going to do is pull in an instrument part and I'm going to use Apple Loops here because it demonstrates how to get things lined up with the project tempo. Apple Loops don't just pop into Pro Tools in the same way they would if you were in GarageBand or Logic, but they're still a helpful resource if you're on a Mac because if you're on a Mac of any kind, at least the basic GarageBand loop set is there and they actually sound pretty nice. So we have to go back to the Workspace browser. And I have memorized that option and semicolon will pop that up because that view along with the mixer, which is command equals, are things that you commonly need to do in Pro Tools. So that's the command is option semicolon pulls it up and, and down. And this is my setup. I have a Glyph external hard drive and I've organized all my loops and I actually organized my Pro Tools sessions on here as well. I'm going to go into the, um, the Apple loops. Now normally your Apple loops are not there. There are normally in this location. And so I move them off to my secondary hard drive but that's the normal location. You can see it, library, audio, Apple Loops, Apple from your main hard drive. What I'm looking for here is called, um, looking for something like a piano track to get started. Now, one thing you'll notice with Pro Tools is you really Nothing fancy here. There's no way to say, okay, I want to look at piano parts and drum parts or search on anything. Basically, it's a browser, just like Finder or Explorer. Uh, we're going to pick one of these. All right, that's um, pretty nice. If you want to adjust the volume of the playback, of the preview playback, you can click right here and turn it up and down. A little fader pops up. I'm going to um, just stop the playback with this button and go back and create a track. 
to uh, take that. Now you don't have to create a track. You could just drop it right into this track um, area. And so that's the way I'm going to do that because it saves a step. So I revealed the track, uh, this track and groups area by clicking on this, this little arrow that pops open that pane. All right, we're going to go with this one. So the nice thing about dragging it into this track series, is it will create the correct kind of track um, right away. And now uh, we're going to go and work on this loop a little bit. So I'll uh, just click here and that'll go to the background. And using my zoom presets that I set up in the previous uh, menu, I can zoom in and out. Now if I, let's just audition this. I have loop, um, loop playback. I'm going to, I have that on here on the transport. Apple loops don't come in cleanly to Pro Tools with the end point or the, the end part of the loop preset. So that's something we'll need to edit. And we can edit by zooming in. I'm going to leave this in slip mode. I'm going to zoom um, way in. And then I need to trim this back. So I'm going to put my cursor here. I'm going to use T, if you remember, T and R to, to zoom in even more. And I'm going to get this um, as close as I possibly can to right at the end of that waveform. And at this point, I'm going to hit S. And that cuts the end of it off. Now I'll go back to zoom level 2. And this should now loop cleanly. The click is a little annoying because it's not in sync. Now the piano part here loops cleanly. But the piano part and the click and the piano part and the bar markers don't line up. Now this piano part, it's four bars long. And in the last video, I showed how you can use command I to set the tempo to match one of these loops. So we'll do that again. If I hit tab to go to the end and again, reviewing, you have to have tab to transient off for this to work. I go to the end of this region and I'll hit Command I. And this is the beginning of bar five because it's four bars long. And I'm adding the beat bar marker there and forcing the location to be um, five. And so now we should be locked in to the tempo of the song. And actually, if we look at it, it's 80. Um, 0 0.0036. So I think it's pretty clear to me that the tempo is intended to be 80. So I'm just going to try setting it to 80. And um, I'll make an adjustment in grid view here to the end just to make sure that's going to loop right around. So now we should have a 